And I talk about this more and more. Uh, we're living in momentous times, and I brace myself each day for the broadcast in an attempt to try to focus my intellect and really try to present you with the historical reasoned analysis uh, that I have developed that has proven to be quite accurate uh, via historical, current uh, research, futurist research, and constantly staying focused on these issues and interviewing the world experts uh, on every subject uh, you can imagine from political science to geopolitics to quantum mechanics, nanotech, uh, robotics, Machiavellian, uh, Venetian technologies of propaganda right through Joseph Goebbels. I've done my homework. In fact, when it comes to understanding this information, I've done a pretty good job. When it comes to articulating it, uh, that's another subject entirely because the breadth and width of reality is so complex that the real genius is being able to communicate things in a overall gestalt that is complex while still being simplistic and speaks to the general population's subconscious mind that is already aware of these truths, but has just not consciously uh, focused on that. And to put it plainly, the Pentagon brags about this in public documents and reports we're going to be getting into this hour. They are attempting to keep the general mind in a subconscious state and to program the subconscious so that the subconscious will control the conscious and to where the public will never wake up to just how out of control obvious the tyranny has gotten. And so all I'm trying to do here is to just point out what's already going on. The elephant in the living room, as they say, and to get people to realize that our salvation lies in admitting the problems we've got so we can get away from these problems. We didn't get here overnight. We won't get over it overnight. The journey of a thousand miles does start with the, with the thought to make the single step and then to finally take that step. But they, they've so preconditioned people that everything I say and do, I know is already pre-programmed in people. It's pre-programmed in me. I say we attacked Iraq wrongly and lied about WMDs. We fund Al-Qaeda, i.e. America. We, no, the, the private criminal corporate interest that have hijacked the nation are the authors and the drivers and the, the, the progenitors of it. We have, have gone along with it, some of us consciously, some of us unconsciously, but, but we're not the, the main culprits. And so I know that when I say the Pentagon brags that they brainwashed the American people, I know the programming at one level and is, oh my gosh, you're bad-mouthing our precious troops. No, no, no. No one is more brainwashed than people in the military, or, or at least the power structure wishes that. Actually, they're the easiest to wake up because they're in the middle of it and go, wait a minute, this guy makes perfect sense. That's exactly what's always been going on. Why didn't I see it? Well, you were in a groupthink scenario. And I'm doing like a cult deprogramming intervention here. And the military, though, does have an older American code still in it from before the globalists took over. So they also hear what I say and remember, that's right. That's, that's America, what that guy's saying. Not these people coming in from FEMA giving us briefings that George Washington's a piece of trash and, and, and that communists are wonderful. We'll be right back, folks. This is a powerful broadcast, what I'm going to cover when we come back. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. It is Sunday, the 28th day of July, 2013. I'm your host, Alex Jones, and I'm talking point free, teleprompter free. I come to you with deep historical research, 18 years on air. I am a documentary filmmaker, and I run the Infowars.com 
syndicated radio transmission as well as the nightly news and i have a team of 40 plus crew members coming to you from deep in the heart of texas broadcasting nationwide and worldwide thank you so much for joining us on this sunday broadcast we're not going to be talking about wiener uh, vowing to stick it out until later in the next hour, because it does illustrate the absurdity of what we'll put up with from politicians. And there's actually a rhyme and a reason to this. Politicians and these front men like Bill Clinton and others are just meant to lower our standards. I will talk about that some, one of the big national stories going on right now. Uh, and I'm going to get into some off-the-chart news. Remember uh, back in March, I don't know, was it five months ago? Uh, Back five months ago, four or five months ago, they were going to take 10% out of everybody's bank accounts in Cyprus and then other European countries they're talking about now to give to private bankers as a bail-in. You've heard of giving the bankers trillions of your tax money to bail them out from derivatives crimes they've committed, synthetic garbage, synthetic debt obligations, the list goes on and on. We've all you know seen that. Well, well, how about now, and they're actually talking about this in Congress now, a bail-in, well, first it was going to be 10% and then... Uh, people put up with that, so that was going to be 15, then 22.5. Now it's going to be 47.5 of uh, the nation's bank accounts. Uh, they call that a haircut, 47.5%, because you can't have these big mega bankers that are being bailed out who created trillions and fake fraud uh, go to jail like Bernie Madoff or Ken Lay. No, 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 instead they get your bank account now. And that's Reuters, uh, by the way. So uh, it was going to be 22.5, but now it's going to be 47.5. Cyprus uh, lenders set Bank of Cyprus bail in at 47.5%. You know, it's like, hey, we're going to rob your bank account at uh, almost half. But, but we don't call that robbery. We call it a bail in. And th th doesn't that sound nice? <laughs> okay, so that's the type of news. Uh, that's the fruits of the New World Order, the fruits of globalism, the fruits of NAFTA and GATT and the Atlantic Treaty Organization and uh, all of the uh, authoritarianism that were sold as security. No, authoritarianism and cronyism and big centralized megabanks running big centralized governments is called nightmare tyranny. It's not called progress. It's not called progressive. It's No, it, it's called swindles. So big, they say it's too big to fail. So the whole society commits to it in the name of fixing it, but all that does is empower them. So we're going to be talking about that. Now, what I'm going to talk about here today is undoubtedly, and I say this a couple times a year because things get more and more wild, this is undoubtedly the most important crystallization or epiphany clarity that I have ever, ever had. And, and, and the clarity has been intensifying. The evidence has been overwhelming. You've seen it. Mainstream media even reports on it. I mean, this is, when I talk about this, you're going to go, yeah, tell us something we didn't know. But the point is, it's the depth of it. And, and, and this is devastating news to the globalist. And this is incredibly important news for free humanity. And you know, I tell you like it is. In fact, I get up here with such hardcore news, I know it actually demoralizes people sometimes and scares people and can be called fear-mongering, but I'm just reporting on what's going on. And I don't think you're cowards. I think you'll know the truth and know the threat and get out of your catatonic state, talking to the general public, not our regular listeners, to understand what's happening. You know, our, our collective house is on fire, and I'm here saying, hey, get up. I can't carry you out of here. Your house is on fire. There's like flames lapping the bed. It's already burned up half the people in the house. And you're, you're saying I'm a conspiracy theorist. No, no. I, I'm documented with top uh, economists in 1998 that they were going to create worldwide derivatives, bankrupt the world economy in the next 15 years and bring in world government. How did I know? It was in Club of Rome and Davos and other press releases. This stuff's all public. I saw a clip today of like Evelyn de Rothschild bragging about it a few years ago about how they'd implode the world currencies and bring in a planetary currency. And it's all happening. And that was on Bloomberg of all places. In fact, I meant to IM you guys that clip. I think the actual, the, oh, oh, you do have it. Good. Okay, we'll get to that. Remind me. This is just too much. See, folks, remind me next hour to play that, please. Thank you. So it's frustrating to watch them say this, watch them do this, watch them carry it out. 
and then sit there and people are ignorant and go, oh, that's your opinion. No, it's not my opinion. <clears throat> now, you can take basically some of my conclusions and say I'm wrong, but whatever. The point is we need to be upset about what's going on and happening. Now, I sent out some tweets at uh, twitter.com forward slash real Alex Jones. You can follow us by going there. Uh, in the last few hours that say the criminal forces in control of our government are very close to falling. Live report today at 4 o'clock central, infowars.com forward slash show for the free audio and video links. And the free iPhone apps and all that's all up there right now. Uh, that was three hours ago, the one six hours ago. Pentagon says they have lost control to independent media led by Drudge. See video of press briefing, infowars.com. Then I have the link to it. I wanted to produce, and, and before that's a film I put out, a short film this weekend. So see, that's the two tweets I put out today about this, and the article is up on Infowars.com. I uh, saw this Saturday morning on Drudge, DrudgeReport.com, and I went and looked, and, and, and no one was covering it. And it was, it was a link to the Defense Department, Defense.gov, the, the, the head Defense Department spokesman, uh, Assistant Secretary of Defense, Head of Public Affairs, George Little. That's a 35-minute press briefing. And I read the transcript, and then I went and found the link on Defense Link, and I watched the briefing, and I called up one of my writers, Adon Salazar. We worked on the article last night. He finished it this morning. And I woke up at 2 a.m. this morning. I went to bed about 10. I went to bed early. I woke up at 2 a.m. I never do that hardly. Could not go to sleep, folks. I've not been asleep over this. Because it's not just what he said. It's analyzing all the top brass and all the top PR flax of the entire Pentagon who were in, in Virginia, in the D.C., Maryland area, complex area. And they look like, they look worse than the Germans looked in the film reels I've seen two days before Hitler committed suicide, and, and they knew the Russians and the, and, the, and, and the U.S. and the Allies were coming in. And it totally clicked, and I'm going to try to go over this. Again, when we come back, this is not our military now. This is run by foreign banks on record, just like they run NATO and they're taking over the European countries. They brag about this. Look it up. Goldman Sachs brags they've conquered Europe. Uh, have troops standing by to take private accounts. I mean, I told you that two years ago they were bragging, and now they're doing it. And I realized it's not just the officers and, and, the, and the enlisted and people that I run into on the street, where now it's about half the troops. I'm in a restaurant on the street. There's bases all over Central Texas. They run over and shake my hand and say they're all awake and that most of their unit's awake. About half the troops come to me. I had troops coming up to me last night in Threadgills with my uncle for his birthday. And I go to other parts of the country and this happens. It's not just the troops, the PSYOP people, and I've had them call in, had them as guests when they retire. They're awake now. And let me tell you, folks, this is what brings down tyrannies. I got some good news for you when we come back, folks. This is amazing. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. All right, this is not going to be Junior League Radio where we boil things down to fifth grade level and repeat slogans all day and make fun of the brainwashed liberals that are really authoritarians. This is, this is, this is real history, folks, okay? Real history. 
because I became kind of a military history novice as a teenager. I've read hundreds of military history books, mainly in the last hundred year period. And so I've read declassified British psychological warfare manuals, U.S. Army psychological warfare manuals, uh, Nazi psychological warfare manuals. I, I know what goes on at the Pentagon. And I read the declassified stuff that they've put out. So when we talk about this, I know more about the command structure and how all these people work than the average person in the military does because they're compartmentalized. And actually, in the speech that was given last week, that's gotten no attention except for DrudgeReport.com and InfoWars.com, the head spokesman for the Pentagon, Public Affairs, said we've got to get uncompartmentalized and we look like fools to everybody. And basically admitted that they're the most brainwashed people out there. And so what's happening is they're realizing their propaganda is so over the top that it's backfiring. And it's making the people in the military who are engaged in propaganda, believing it's for a good cause, completely turn against them. That's why they're so worried about whistleblowers. Now, you know last week, the Associated Press announced, so did Reuters, that they're now going to have domestic propaganda with the CIA and Defense Department targeting the American people. That's big national news. Now, that's always been going on to a certain extent. But there's the headline, U.S. repeals propaganda ban, spreads government-made news to Americans. That's already been going on. And it's not really government news. It's globalist news that have hijacked the government that's anti-gun, anti-family. I mean, you see it. It's in sitcoms, the news, the dramas. That isn't just some liberal bias. Liberal is a psyop. These aren't liberals. See, everything's a lie, folks. And I'm going to decode it for you right now. Okay? Now, if you're a radio listener, you've got to go to InfoWars.com and look at the video I'm talking about while the show's on. And if it's distracting, watch it after the show. But the point is, it's a 35-minute press conference. And when you see the people in the audience and the questions they ask... And some of these people are like generals, colonels, you know, heads of Air Force TV divisions. They're getting up there going, nobody believes us anymore, and I, I want to stop lying. And he goes, well, we tell as much truth as we can now. Now, let's not, yes, we, uh, I agree. But we, uh, I mean, it's, it's really an embarrassing moment because this is meant to be a PSYOP. They've been authorized to do this because... They need to come out and say, oh, we want to be your friend. We want to work with all the independent media now, which means sponsorships and buy-offs and taking people over. It's what they're trained to do in other countries. Turned against us publicly. But they need to get the troops who believe the mission's good to buy into it. Because once they're hooked, once they bite on the worm, they don't know there's a hook there. So it has to sound good up front to the public and the military, and then once they get them into it, then via peer pressure and the rest of it, they'll follow the program to embed themselves in the alternative media. Now, now again, they announced last week they're going to infiltrate the media. They're going to influence us. They're going to run psyops on us. This, they've blown the bugle. We're, we're being charged. This is a captured U.S. military. You can watch Army War College. Uh, you know, professors like Thomas Barnett, who's pro-New World Order, admitting it on C-SPAN that they work for basically foreign offshore corporations. So, so the country's been soft cooed. There's been a soft coup d'etat by these interests, and they don't want a counter coup. That's as they try to do their mop-up operation, get rid of the states, bankrupt the country fully to bring in more social control to make us dependent. This is all publicly written up, too, by the way. I'm not just saying this. It's outrageously public. But again, they have to kind of make a lot of it public and only thinly veil some of the more uh, vicious aspects because it's got to look like it's no big deal in front of the police and military. It's all part of just parading. I mean, here's an example. My wife was at a marathon in Waco this weekend, Saturday, and they had different youth corps out in uniforms running checkpoints. In fact, she got video of this. This is so commonplace that I haven't even had her email it to the office yet so we can put it together. This is in a bunch of clips when they told her, get out of there. She's like, why are there people at checkpoints with youth brigades and the police? And they're like, get out of here, get out of here. See, don't ask questions to my wife at a marathon. 
and it's it's high school proms you name it'll have u.s army there or checkpoints i've got all these clips they're pouring in of checkpoints in tennessee checkpoints in california checkpoints in michigan where you'll have u.s army national guard TSA, Viper teams, SWAT teams, local police searching everyone and pointing guns as part of a drill. Yeah, the drill is to get everybody used to just North Korea on steroids. I've talked to reporters who've been in North Korea as reporters for years, and they go, well, no, it's already controlled, so it's not like that except in certain areas. I mean, th th this, is, this is flaming authoritarianism. So what's the big story I'm getting at? Because we'll go to break and come back with it. What's the massive story I'm going to break down for you? I go to Drudge Saturday yesterday, and I, and I see Pentagon spokesman, public affairs must change with the times. And he's saying we can't let Drudge Report and other alternative media and blogs communicate with the public. We... We can't cover stuff up. It's a 35-minute press conference because it's going to get out anyways. And when you watch this whole thing, they're going, people come up and ask questions. They go, but we're told to lie. And he's like, oh, okay, I know, but we want to be their friends now. So you can see how, how freaked out and depressed, but then other people all got tears in their eyes. You mean, we're not going to lie to them about how we're training to take their guns? I mean, it's it's... Because they, here's the reason the military is our number one audience, even though a novice would tune in and think I was criticizing the military. If I was a German in 1935, I wouldn't be against the military. I'd be against who was in control of it, Adolf Alois Hitler. I wouldn't be against the Russian military in 1947. I'd be against Stalin, who was in control. And so the military, more than anybody, hears me on the air for 18 years talking about stuff that nobody knew about before I got on air and broke it down because a lot of people on the inside brought me stuff and I was the only guy crazy enough to cover it when I saw proof. And when I'd go to these drills and stuff and they'd threaten to kill me and stuff, I went, well, you, you're training to take guns and you just threatened me when my camera was off? And then I go back to my hotel room and it's broken into stuff. I was like, this is America. I didn't believe this stuff. I just came here to cover what you're doing. And it's, the general doesn't want you taping this. Well, I know why. It was guys in John Deere hats going, you can't take in our guns. And the Marines were practicing killing them. And I got footage of it. And, of course, the Marines were hopping mad. They were told they were going to be court-martialed if they didn't stop me. That's what I'm telling you, folks. I found the treason. And I talked about it. And the military went, yeah, we, we do do that. That is wrong. That's why the military loves this show. That's why this broadcast is such a danger to them. That's why Drudge is such a danger that carries our news on a weekly basis. Is because we know the secrets. We know the program. I'm going to break it down and play these clips straight ahead. This is Bombshell. Bombshell. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught 
going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We had the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Alex Jones here on this live Sunday edition, broadcasting worldwide. We're here every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, and of course, weekdays, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. The news websites are prisonplanet.com. We're fighting the illegal construction of a prison planet by the kleptocrats that uh, don't like freedom because they want to secure their ill-gotten gains, and we're fighting it with the info war, hence infowars.com. All right, I'm going to get to these Defense Department clips at the official, authorized, prepared statement uh, of George Little, Assistant to the Secretary of Defense for Public Affairs, with all these generals and everybody packed at Fort Meade, Maryland, NSA headquarters. Okay? Because they know that they're listening to the phones, they've got computers that break down the real poll numbers. Forbes went out and has hired data mining companies to find that it's like, 80-something percent of people are pro-gun. Uh, Congress has lower than a 10% approval rating. I mean, the system's in trouble, folks. They have no credibility. And so now you've got the military commanders that are civilian and, and, and basically globalist run in many cases trying to maintain control over the military. But then you've also got a lot of people in government who are civilian who know what's going on and are upset. I've talked to so many NSA people and reporters and whistleblowers and they say, listen, Alex, uh, people are listening to you in the government, and there's so little oversight on government, and they all get away with it. They just sit and listen to you at these military bases, and we see it. I mean, some days, like 10% of the traffic we're getting of millions of visitors is from military bases and government bases. And, and, and I mean, believe me, they don't have 50,000, 60,000, 100,000 people from the government listening every day who are being paid to do that. And, there, and by the way, it's not just junk traffic. We can follow it. They're buying stuff. So let's make this clear. The government is not our enemy. The criminals that have hijacked it are the problem and who have hijacked our Bill of Rights and Constitution. Now, now before I get to these clips, let me just play. I could play all the media attacking yours truly, but for every time I'm attacked, they attack Drudge 
Matt Drudge of DrudgeReport.com, probably, let's not exaggerate, 15, 20 times for every time they attack him. You know, for every time I'm attacked, he gets attacked 15 times or more because you know, his site's probably five times bigger than ours. It's the biggest news aggregator in the world, bigger than Twitter and Facebook combined. That's New York Times' own study. It's probably bigger than that. Believe me, I know nothing's bigger than a Drudge link to our website. And we, we have our own big stories that become sometimes the number one story on the web without Drudge, but most of the time it is Drudge that does that. I mean, it's like the big gun. And I happen to know it's really independent from a kind of paleoconservative, libertarian, constitutionalist bent. But, but the reason I talk about it is, why is the Pentagon and the White House and the Justice Department constantly bad-mouthing it or attacking it or scared of it? Because they know it's real, folks. Why are they attacking us? They know we're real. And it shakes them up that they can't control the narrative because all we do is go, okay, here's a clip of Obama saying he would not raise any taxes on poor people and no payroll tax, and he did, he did all that. Here's Obama saying no lobbyist, he breaks all records. Here's Obama saying he cut the deficit, he more than tripled it. You know, on and on and on and on. You know, it, it's simply that we're going, uh, he, uh, here's what he said here, here's what he said here. Because the corporate prostitutes, the parrot press, that's what they are. The, the, they're not the prostitutes, that's a good term for them, prostitute press, but I mean, more they're just the parrot press. The parrotutes, I guess you could call them. You cross a prostitute and a parrot with a prostitute, and you get a prostitute, a parrot prostitute. But the issue here is, is that they're panicking because they're not all powerful, like Hitler or Ceausescu or all or Julius Caesar or any of these corrupt systems. And we could see the New World Order fall if you believe it. But they've gone into all the churches with cognitive infiltration on record in the last 50 years and told them it's always the end of the world next week, so why get involved, do what government says, Romans 13, Hitler's favorite quote. Render unto Caesar garbage out of context. So that's a psyop, folks. We, we, we could fix America. We wouldn't be perfect. We could make it better. It's all in increments. We didn't go to hell in a handbasket overnight, folks. We're not going to go back to basic liberty overnight either. And it's not just the government, it's the general public is either good and wholesome, we're the people that hold the society up and, and honorable and enjoy being nice and enjoy being giving and caring. And then there's all the crazy people obsessed with narcissism and, and lunacy and mental illnesses up everywhere and the toxins in the environment contributing to it. I mean, you all see the craziness intensifying and the statistics show it. We've all got to get ourselves right with God, you know, you took the Bible out of schools, folks, look what happened, cause and effect. Even if you don't believe the Bible's real, at least it was some basic morals, it was something. Now look at who leads our country, all the stuff you see on MTV and the rest of it. People say, oh, you goody two shoes, you can't handle it. No, I know what it does to young minds. An adult can see stuff like that, it doesn't really do anything to them. Not young people, we have a, we're being screwed up here. And I look at this footage of the Pentagon, we'll have to get to in the next segment. But right now, let's get to these first clips, and then I'll explain why this is so big. This is just a few of them. There's so many hundreds of these. This is just five or six of them. Here is Hillary Clinton saying the government's losing the info war, the, 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 the globalist offshore banks that have hijacked it. Because when they say our government, folks, it's not our government. That's on. They brag they've conquered America and the rest of the world, pretty much. Let's go ahead and go to Hillary Clinton so, to telling you to, at a CFR meeting that they're losing to their people. They know nobody watches C-SPAN. We're losing. We're losing. We better do something. You see, the enemy's losing. We're winning. Let's go to it. We are engaged in an information war. You know, during the Cold War, we did a great Where job have I heard of that getting before? America's message out. After the Berlin Wall fell, we said, okay, fine. <coughs> After that, you know, we've All done right. it. We're done. <laughs> we we are in an information war, and we are losing that war. I'll be very oh, that's good. In my assessment. Yeah, yeah, because because even though America had problems, the Soviets were super evil. So you could get a lot of power grabbed and and and, and do a lot of stuff and have, have Americans go along because you were fighting people that we knew were pretty super you know corrupt. But see, now it's Al Qaeda that you publicly run. Everybody knows that now. That's in the news. It's like Robert Gibbs said, well, there's been a drone program for years and it's you know, pretty much illegal, but we're not allowed to say it exists even though it's admitted to exist. And that's like the man behind the curtain that discredits us. Remember he said that a few months ago? And they all laughed. Well, you guys all think we don't know you're conning us. We know. Now let's go to the next. And, the, and by the way, do you think Army PSYOPs and Air Force and Marine and Navy PSYOPs, you think they know America's being sold out and they're being told to lie to us? You think they like doing that? There are a lot of great people in our military. 
they are freaked out. I talked to them, and I saw it in this Pentagon press briefing coming up. Okay, let's go to the next clip. There's so many of these. Uh, let's uh, go to senior White House advisor Obama, Pfeiffer, of three months ago or two months ago, saying they can't communicate with anybody or let even undersecretaries of state talk to the press because Drudge Report will get it. What we will get? What we'll get? What we'll get? Infowars.com will get. Drudge will get. We will get what you said. Oh my goodness! And then you can't can't control it. Let, let's go to that clip. You guys you know. love Drudge. <laughs> I'm not the only one up here. Um, and um, no, but why, why does it drive conversation in your world the way it seems to? Well, it's not, it does, it's not that it drives our conversation in our world. I'm fairly ambivalent to what Drudge puts up on a daily basis. But it, uh, I mean, there's a, it's le this is less true now than it was before, but there's a Pavlovian um, response from you know, some media outlets. It's like, why are you asking me about this? Well, it's on Drudge. You know? And so it's, you know, in some cases... And it's, what do you say to that? I sort of, I sort of asked them to repeat them, you know, say that to themselves out loud again and think about it. Um, all right, let's stop right know, there. Let's every, stop right there. According to every metric and all the press you see, Drudge only becomes more powerful, more influential by the minute. Because the other media is becoming more fractured. It's like a singularity of news. But a few sites, maybe six or seven, Drudge is the biggest, InfoWars is in the middle get bigger or maintain while everything else loses their audience. So number one, he's lying. Oh, well, it doesn't have any power anymore. But, uh, you know, you've got to laugh at that. And that's what—that's the talking point that Big Sis did when we come back. In Congress, she goes, well, I don't look at Drudge about bullets. Drudge was linked to AP and to Forbes. But see, they didn't say that. It's links, folks. Most of it to mainstream news, just the stuff they don't want to be the big talking point. Drudge's secret is he takes a lot of mainstream stuff that the gatekeepers don't want to be a big issue and pushes it out there. We'll be back with the... As we saw in Katrina, and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over one million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod Kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. The Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations, the film, a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations, third edition, and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com. All right, so we're talking about real media, independent media, media that actually tries to find out what's really going on. It could be across the political spectrum, just... I know some left-wing sites that I would actually call left-wing that actually, you know, try to report on real things. They report on both the right-wing and left, uh, you know, right-wing and left-wing, like counterpunch. But we're discussing here today the obsession by the White House, the Justice Department, the Pentagon, the dinosaur mainstream parrot media, the demon parrot media that just parrot each other's you know, vomit back on forth on each other, like a dog going back to its vomit. I hate to use that analogy, but it is a Bible verse. And they're just obsessed with anyone that dare point out that they're a pack of liars and that they almost have no audience. I mean, you see the numbers, broadcast TV, cable TV, cable news. It is in free fall because people in the survey say they don't trust them. So if you just tuned in, I played Hillary Clinton saying they're losing the info war, the criminals that run our government. Then we have 
uh, senior advisor Pfeiffer saying, don't look at Drudge, you know, he's so horrible, basically. The whole clip, he says, we can't let our people talk to anybody in the press, even undersecretaries of major departments, because Drudge will get it. You can go watch the full clip on Infowars.com. Uh, then you've got uh, White House disses Drudge, uh, Jay Carney, and then you've got DHS uh, Secretary Jant Napolitano going, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You didn't just say drudge, did you? I mean, that's kooky, made-up stuff. I mean, and then she goes, there's no bullets. We're not buying bullets. Of course, turned out they bought exactly what we said. It was on the Fed Biz website. And then it turned out AP, Reuters, LA Times, Forbes, all went, yeah, this is like five times what you ever bought. And you're buying armored vehicles and doing riot control training. What's this for? Everybody knows now they bought the bullets and said we were liars. Everybody knows they're deploying the drones and said we were liars. See... That's the thing. They, they can't lie in a vacuum because there are places like DrudgeReport.com. And speaking of DrudgeReport.com, let's put it up on screen before we go to these other clips. Uh, if you go there and click on the uh, left-hand side, LinkedIn Red, you can see the Drudge headline dealing with the exact story we're talking about, Pentagon vows, American people should hear it from us, not a scoop on the Drudge Report. And that links through to our article, Government Promises to Stop Lying Because of Drudge Report Spotlight. Shows the power of real media and breaking through the electronic Berlin Wall. Now, I've talked about that, but, but again, this shows that the establishment understands that we're having an effect on them, and all the numbers show that. Now, let's go to two more of the clips, and I've got to get to the Pentagon briefing before this hour ends. Second hour is coming up. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next clip. This is the White House press secretary. If someone mentions a story on Drudge, doesn't matter if it's BBC or Infowars.com or, or The Hill or Media Matters, it doesn't matter what it is. Well, Media Matters run with the White House, so they'll agree with that. They will flip out on it and say it doesn't exist. Uh, so let's go ahead uh, to that next clip. Thanks, Jay. Uh, I have a question. I think there's a, a report out today, I think it's on the Judge Report, uh, that the president uh, Be mindful of your sources. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hit pause right there. Hit pause. Back it up again. It's just bad audio from WhiteHouse.gov for radio listeners. I want to play it again. They want to talk about an article linked on there. Remember, this is a, art this is a page of links. Occasionally, you know, they, they break something. But the point is, is it, it's, it's links, stories they don't want you to see. And he says, oh, watch your sources. And they all laugh. And they're all like, because eh, 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 they wish they were on DrudgeReport.com. A lot of them are on DrudgeReport.com. So they're going, why am I bad? I'm on there. See, everybody gets this, folks. Let's, I mean, this is just like the Super Bowl of websites. They're at the Super Bowl. I mean, why is that a bad thing? It's not even a Drudge Report. It's the stories that, that Drudge thinks are important that are important. Drudge just has a good pulse on what's happening. Let's go ahead and go back to the clip. Thanks, Jay. Uh, I have a question. I think there's a, a report out today. I think it's on the Drudge Report uh, that the president... Uh, Be mindful of your sources. <laughs> I'm just asking the question that the president told someone he believes Mitt Romney wants to pick uh, General Petraeus as a running mate. Do you have any information on this? All right, that's enough. And of course, it turned out that Petraeus had been approached and it was in discussions, didn't happen. But I mean, it's, it's like, next they're going to say Bill Clinton was with Monica Lewinsky. That broke on Drudge, too, and everybody knows. He did not have sex with that woman. Ah, oh, they caught you, Drudge. You're wrong about Monica. Oh, he was right about that. Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Okay. All right, well, let's go to the next clip here. And I, and I got to stop here and get to the big briefing that's the big news here uh, at, at the Pentagon where they say we've got to basically stop lying to the public. Uh, let's go to uh, Janet Napolitano saying don't listen to Drudge. Not responding, why are you buying bullets that are on record and thousands of weapons and, and thousands of armored vehicles? No, just, oh, I don't listen to Drudge. Let's go to that clip. I don't know if I put Forbes and Drudge in the same sentence, but uh, uh, I, uh, let me be as clear as I can be. Well, uh, leave Drudge out of it. I wouldn't. I think they're credible, but Forbes is definitely a credible uh, magazine. And yeah. so when it was they a use link that on number Drudge and then we to hear Forbes. silence from the department, uh, and Americans see the ammo shelves empty, you know, all that feeds that. Uh, that well, like I said, it, it got into the blogosphere and it went viral. We understand that, and and. As and then if you go watch the full, full thing, we don't have time. I mean, she just goes on to say we're not getting these bullets. It's all a lie. So, I mean, we're, we're entering cuckoo puff land here. Okay, they're counting on you 
not going and checking, but because it's on DrudgeReport.com and Infowars.com and WorldNetDaily.com and to a certain extent DailyCaller.com, even though they attack me constantly, I don't care, whatever. I just want to beat the New World Order. All these other sites, they don't control the narrative. We have more traffic than them. I don't walk around on red carpets, you know, with my boyfriend like Anderson Cooper or whatever. I don't bring my wife and kids on TV and take them around on red carpets, but I've got a bigger audience than Anderson Cooper. It's all an illusion. It, Drudge has an audience probably 10 times Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper's got like a half million viewers, folks. This weekend show has 2 million listeners conservatively. Weekday, 3 million. It's all a hoax. It's all a fraud, and the Pentagon gets that and doesn't want to be in the bunker mentality. Joseph Goebbels, in the last year of World War II, the Nazi propaganda minister, I've seen the speech he gave with subtitles. Uh, I think it was on a PBS documentary. The point is, he said we must stop lying to the people in a speech to the SS because they don't, when, our, when, when our propaganda is an obvious lie, it doesn't work. When they see the truth, you've got to be honest, but then try to basically spin it to still support us within the truth. And that's what the Pentagon's doing here because their own troops and own PSYOP officers in droves are awake and want to be good patriotic Americans. And remember what the old Army and old Air Force and old Marines were about. And the old handbooks, even in the 60s, were George Washington, patriotic, Bill of Rights, Constitution, due process. We don't torture. We don't lie. We don't steal. Now it's we lie, we steal because we're the good guys. And we kill and we torture. And so the Pentagon... I mean, it's a 35-minute briefing. I got a bunch of these clips. When we come back in the next hour, I'll play the clip where one PSYOPs person gets up and goes, the public doesn't believe us. We've got to stop lying. And you see people nodding their heads in the audience. I mean, it, they're told to lie to us every day. They don't want to domestically come in and engage in propaganda. This is really freaking them out. They know this is authoritarianism. And he talks about the Drudge Report here, too. So... Uh, here it is, Pentagon spokesman, public affairs must change with times. And by the way, what's it from? Can't believe it, it's from Drudge. It's from defense.gov. That's what the, the, the video and audio and, uh, and text that Drudge linked to. Because, you know, you can't trust him. I mean, he just linked to the Defense Department's own website. Because, I mean, he's a big liar, just like us. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, uh, clip number one. Here it is. All leaders must understand the role of the press and the importance of working with the media. This is the head of the Pentagon PR. We cannot hide our bad news stories. Bad news gets out one way or the other, and we must come to terms with telling the bad stories as well as the good. When bad things happen, the American people should hear it from us, not as a scoop on the Drudge Report. <laughs> Unlike many fine red wines, bad news does not get better with age. All right, let's stop there. This requires... Let's stop there. You got to go watch the whole 35-minute report on Infowars.com, or just go to DrudgeReport.com. It's the left-hand side, red-linked. Um, say hi to Matt and the crew. I know they're listening because they just linked that up there on the site. And I'm glad because I saw this on Drudge yesterday and just freaked out over it. And it was nowhere else, ladies and gentlemen, that because I haven't got to the meat yet of this. I mean, they've got their people, generals and colonels and the heads of Air Force, you know, uh, news getting up and going, no one believes us. We lie all the time. You know, uh, and, and, then, and then it hurts our people. And we want to tell the truth. You can only tell the truth when your mission's really good. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Um, we're going to finish up with the DOD um, press briefing by the head of DOD not just Pentagon, but the entire Defense Department public affairs head saying public affairs is killing us, spin is killing us, lying is killing us. And the people in the audience look demoralized, freaked out. Some have tears in their eyes. People get up and go, I want to tell the truth. You mean I can stop lying now? I haven't gotten to the meat and potatoes of this yet. Because when I have a headline, we probably should have had part of that in the transcript. Government promises to stop lying because of Drudge Report spotlight. They use the word lying, and we need to stop lying in the piece, but then it's not in our article. It doesn't matter. People aren't complaining because it's in the video, but I think we should have those tidbits. Of course, honestly, the story got finished being written at about 2 in the morning, and then I woke up and called the, the writer and said, is it done, and then read it and then approved it, and then it went up this morning. Uh, it's just... Uh, 
My problem is, is that I'm shell-shocked by all this, the magnitude of it, how real it is, watching what they're doing, and seeing that most of these government people either aren't bad people, or they're compartmentalized, or they are corrupt and evil, but don't know how media works. And to know the next move they're going to make, and to see the talking points and the tricks, it's pathetic, and it's scary, too. Because they're not like some omnipotent parent up there that has all the answers, folks, and knows how to, you know, has got everything in control. Oh, they're in control of our lives to a great extent, but they're not in control of themselves. And, and I think about private business and private life, how many egomaniacs there are, how many backstabbers, how many liars, how many criminals, how many nuts, how many delusional fruitcakes there are in this modern society and how dishonorable as much as a third of the population is, and another 20% is totally gullible and follows them, it is scary to think about the people, some people I know in my life, if they were a general, or if they were a PR person, or if they were a media reporter, they would be hell on wheels. And you know what? They are hell on wheels. When you lay down to authority, you get a dictator. You get a Pol Pot, an Adolf Hitler, a Mao Zedong, a... Genghis Khan, and they, uh, uh, Vlad the Impaler, uh, and they just start killing people and dominating and stealing stuff for fun because that's what they're into. I like to take friends out and buy them a big dinner and let the wine flow freely. I just love giving to people just because it feels good. It's not like I'm a goody two-shoes. I just, it feels good to like treat people. It's fun to have people over to your house, cook them dinner, hang out, you know, fun to go to their house. I got friends that love to be hospitality to me and really enjoy it. Then you go to some people's houses, though, and they act weird about everything, and it's like they're uptight, and I just, they don't like being nice to you, but then they, it's all about getting something, and you, and you know they're going to want something, and it's coming, and, you know, it's just like, wow. I just want to be around good people, <laughs> you know? I just, I, and I want people to know out there, as stuff gets more and more corrupt, as things get more and more evil in this world, I know you feel like there aren't good people, and I know you feel like, so what, why should I be good? Listen, there are more good people than you know. We're just not acting out like the evil people are. And God knows what you're doing. The universe, if it's energy, whatever. It's always darkest before the dawn. And I really think humanity's greatest time of achievement is coming right now. I mean, we need to spread our wings. We're going to make it to not just the best time in our little short transient lives, out, out, brief candle, as Shakespeare wrote, but in the lives of our species because I'm telling you, I look at images of my five-year-old daughter last night at that restaurant. She'd gone to see an a, um, archaeology display in Waco of mammoths and saber-toothed tigers and 20-foot sloths. And she stuck two french fries in her mouth. I got a photo of it. I was said, I'm a saber-toothed tiger. And she was so cute. And I just right then was willing to give up everything a thousand times just, just for her to have a future. And, and, and once you realize it's about your kids and about their children and their children, everybody's children, then it doesn't even matter. Then it's everything. There's no more fear. You're just going to do the right thing. And then it's, it's, it's all answered. Our viewers have demanded it. So now you're going to get it. More pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I-beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the Info War. You know, I don't claim to be an old wise man. I'm not even 40 years old yet. I'm 39. People think I'm like 50 because I've put some wear on these tires. Let me tell you, been on the air 18 years, been involved politically for 20. Been awake for probably 25 years and had a lot of interesting life experiences. But I think about my grandfathers that were in World War II. And I think about all the old timers I knew and how hardworking they were and how smart they were and how decent they were. And I think about all the great achievements of America and how great our country's been. And I read all the Army training manuals and, and, and officer training publications that, that they've had for hundreds of years. I've, I've read over dozens of those 
Listeners are always mailing them to us. I was sent one that was over 170 years old. It's back there in the back office all falling apart uh, for the U.S. Army back from the uh, 1820s. And it's all about liberty and freedom and small government and the individual and being honorable and building an incredible society. And then I see what the globalists have built and what they've done to the U.S. Army that is older than America, folks. It's the, it was founded by George Washington as a militia commander in Virginia and then modeled off that and, and, and it became our army in July 4th, 1776. And I look at what they've turned the army into. And I look at those army uh, soldiers from the enlisted all the way up in these PSYOP meetings, and they are genuinely freaked out because they know PSYOPs and they know what's being done to America. And they hear my show, folks, and they know I'm singing from the same sheet of music as they are, but I'm deciphering it and telling the truth of what it really is. And there, it's not a power trip, by the way. It's the opposite. I wish I could have a big ego and be on delusional power trip like so many people that get a thimble of power. As I get more and more influence, it is crushing to be under the microscope. What do you say about an ant who's under a magnifying glass? You call them unlucky. And to be able to see what I cover and what I do have an effect, and it's like, wow, well, I need to do a better job. And then I try to imagine people in corporate PR and government PR, who I know on average love their kids. And at a certain point, you can't package bull anymore and say it's for a greater good. I met with a former CIA section chief's son, who's a famous writer for Esquire, doing a big profile on me. And I approved so much stuff to him. And, you know, I saw him have somewhat of a new level of awakening. But who knows if it'll get past the editors. And you just come to the realization of... We either wake people up and change what's going on or we go into a new dark age because we've reached that event horizon crossroads. Right now, we're really going into it. We're really entering it right now. I've been saying the last few years, we're getting close to that. No, we're now entering it. I can say this week, we have crossed into the vortex. No one should be saying you're bored. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. I mean, this is history. Make it or break it for humans. What we're going to go through, because if we have a new World War III type deal or some crazy tyranny come to power, you're going to talk about billions dead here. I mean, this is going to, once stuff gets out of control and you let the worst people get in charge, you may not believe in the devil, folks, but he believes in you. And whether it's archetypal or not, it will manifest. And the mushroom clouds and the, and the bioweapons and the mass death and the dirty bombs and the civil wars will kick off. And nobody wants that. And everybody listening to me that's got any connection to reality, any spiritual connection, any discernment, any street smarts, good old boy guts, whatever you call it, you know I'm telling you gospel truth right out of my soul, right out of my heart. And I mean, the decision is now because they're either going to have this big moment of truth and use it to bring in total tyranny and just, okay, you're under a tyranny, forget the pretenses. This is the way it is, basically martial law under another name, security. Or we're going to have a big monologue and a big debate and a big, uh, this first will be a monologue for the mainstream media, then a debate about the future of humanity. And if there's any real debate, we start reversing the pendulum back towards sanity, back towards liberty. And by increment, we can turn this around for ourselves and our children and our posterity. Because posterity is everything. I am the posterity of my forebears that came here on the Mayflower on both sides of my family. I am the posterity that fought against the Tories in 1776. I am the posterity that you know, my family on both sides that helped found Texas at the very core of starting the whole thing at Washington on the Brazos. The Jones family, the Ayers family, all of them. And my father and my mother meeting each other at the University of Texas in a, in a union that went back hundreds of years to families that met together hundreds of years ago in the past, not even knowing it. I mean, there's so much going on in this world that isn't in all your little atheist books, ladies and gentlemen. There is a destiny for humanity and all of our ancestors that worked so hard that we have basic freedom now to all be squandered away for nothing. I guess I've got time to go to this next clip before we go to break. Let's, again, this is a Defense Department thing. I watched it at, 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 at 5 a.m. this morning again. I watched it yesterday. And I watched it again this morning, and I made notes. And, and, but you just got to go see the whole thing because, because you see the faces. You see the tears in their eyes. They can't believe the Pentagon is saying, let's not lie anymore. And everyone's, we can tell the truth. And, and, and here's just one of the clips. 
Here's just one of the clips uh, where the uh, public affairs for Air Force television, that's the person making sure the spin's right, has tears in her eyes. And she says, no one believes us. They think we're liars. And she talks about how they've lied about the jets and, you know, bad uh, oxygen. And it turned out bad contractors. And they tried to lie about that even though the jets were crashing. Well, we can't talk bad about our contractors. And, and, and he, he kind of gets scared, though, because she's admitting it's out lying. He goes, you tell what you can. And I think this guy's probably actually a good guy. He, he gets, and we're really, see, America has gotten to the point now where it's the moment of truth, that crossroads, that event horizon where everybody working in the system knows, man, this is only going to get worse if we don't turn this around. And they're all looking at their kids and going, I've studied history. This is what the bad guys do. See, it's that point of looking in your kids' eyes, ladies and gentlemen, and you as listeners have to have that, and people that make fun of us have to have that. Listen, what, what more has to come out? about torture and government drug dealing and lying and propaganda and stealing money and foreign banks running us and illegal spying. What more has to come out before you join the Republic? Let's, let's go to this incredible exchange and then we'll come back and get into some other news. But uh, uh, here's part of it right now. Uh, this happened mm -hmm. Thursday. How are you? It's my first time up here. I'm Staff Sergeant Hostetler. I work for Air Force Production. I, my question is, you mentioned that we need to start telling the story about the bad news as well as the good. And the issue that I see that we're facing, I just got back from Afghanistan and the issues that we faced before, you know, the, the big incident that I can think of before I left was when the Air Force pilots talked about the epoxy that they were experiencing. It seems like we have this culture in our career to kind of glaze over these issues and put out this positive press on, no, our jets are fine. And so with the good and the bad, I don't think the American people actually trust us to deliver the accurate information. How are we, what's the plan to change that in the way ahead? Because to continue the way we have, to continue to put that positive spin, it feels like we're losing a lot of our audience because they're not listening. Because we keep saying the same thing over, everything is okay, and it's not. Like, or with the sexual assault issues oh, it's that not we've been okay. experiencing in the Air Force. So how do we change that culture from that PAO up? Because a lot of times, the speaking from my perspective, and I can only speak from my perspective and a junior enlisted perspective, the younger generations get it that we have to start being honest and forthright. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to convey those ideas and convince the chain of command to necessarily follow those or to be oh, to stop ready lying? to put that first foot forward before someone else leaks our right. story. Is there a plan to kind of change? All right, let's stop right there. And, and I, mean, the, I mean, the main body of it comes up after that. You've got to go to infowars.com or drudgereport.com has the video linked on the left-hand side, linked in red. I mean, again, it's like watching a movie. You got to go watch the 35 minutes because then he's like, well, we try to tell the truth, but we can't always. It's, it's extremely powerful. And then other people get up and, and say, yeah, people don't believe us anymore. Well, yeah, because there's criminal elements in there, folks, that ordered a murder of Pat Tillman. And then a story of how he charged an Al-Qaeda nest. And then the Air Force colonel, the coroner that was doing uh, the coroner work for the Army, would not lie and say that he hadn't been killed up close with powder burns. And then the witnesses came out, they'd executed him because he was going to come back and speak out against the war. I mean, this is like, that's why she's shaking and has tears in her eyes, because it's dangerous to talk about all this. But they're only bringing this out now because they realize they've lost all credibility. Just just lying constantly. Yeah, but there's a lot more. This is a big deal, though, ladies and gentlemen, that across the board, they realize they don't control the narrative. The lies don't work anymore. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at infowars.com forward slash show.